Ocean gyres are asymmetric. Their centers are shifted to the west in all ocean basins. This shift causes currents on the western side of the basins to be more concentrated than those on the eastern side. This concentration of currents along the western edge of our oceans is called western boundary intensification. These western boundary currents occur in all the major ocean basins. The cause of western boundary intensification is the way Coriolis deflection changes with latitude. The Coriolis effect is strongest at the poles and weakest close to the equator. Therefore, the degree to which objects in motion turn due to Coriolis varies with latitude. Water particles moving west near the equator experience very little Coriolis deflection, allowing them to travel fairly straight across the basin until they reach a coastline, at which point they are forced to turn and move towards higher latitudes. As the water travels away from the equator, it experiences greater Coriolis deflection, causing it to turn away from the coast back out into the ocean basin. So in addition to Coriolis causing the centers of the gyres to shift westward, variations in Coriolis deflection with latitude cause the currents on either side of the basin to differ. With strong concentrated flows of water along the western edge of the basins balanced by slower, more diffuse flows back towards the equator on the eastern side. Scientists and navigators have known about this phenomenon for a long time, but our current understanding of how and why western currents are so strong was not fully developed until the 1940s. One of the biggest contributions was by a scientist named Henry Stommel in a paper he wrote in 1948 called The Western Intensification of Wind-Driven Ocean Currents. In this paper, he argued that since these western boundary currents are a common feature of all ocean basins, their formation was independent of local topological features. So the physical basis of their formation could be modeled in a simpler system. The model he chose was a simple rectangular ocean. The properties he set were that the water had a uniform depth at rest, wind blowing across the surface of the water caused currents to form, water movement altered water depth, and a friction term was added so that the water did not continue to accelerate forever once the wind started blowing. Wind patterns matched what is found in the northern hemisphere of Earth with the bottom edge of the basin at the equator. Easterly trade winds blow from right to left across the bottom of the basin, and westerlies blow left to right across the top. With all of this set up, Stommel was able to ask how water movement and surface elevation changed when Coriolis force varied. The first scenario he modeled was the movement of water particles when there was no Coriolis effect. With no Coriolis effect, water particles moved in relatively symmetrical paths around the basin. This movement caused water to push away from the center of the basin towards the edges, causing a lowering of water level in the middle, similar to what happens when you mix a cup of tea or coffee with a spoon. He then asked what happens when a Coriolis force is added. First, he added a Coriolis parameter, but held it constant so that it did not vary with latitude. Under a constant Coriolis force, particle movement was similar to the no Coriolis force condition, with particles continuing to travel in symmetrical paths around the basin. However, this movement was no longer driven simply by friction from the wind. Rather, as in the real world, Coriolis deflection-driven Ekman transport pushed water towards the center of the basin, creating a bulge in the center. This bulge, in turn, created a pressure gradient resulting in geostrophic flow around the contours of the basin. The constant Coriolis scenario showed that the currents are caused by geostrophic flow, but it did not explain western boundary intensification. It was also not a good representation of the Earth because on Earth the strength of the Coriolis effect is not constant. It varies with latitude. So in a final scenario, Stommel allowed Coriolis force to vary. He made the values low near the equator and higher at higher latitudes. As soon as he did this, the particle path shifted to the left creating a situation similar to what we see in real oceans. This shift westward of the currents corresponds to a shift in the surface elevation, which is also consistent with what is found in the real world, where the pressure gradient driven geostrophic flow is shifted to the left of the basin along with the surface bulge. So through this set of simple models, Stommel was able to show that the feature of the real world that caused western boundary intensification was the fact that Coriolis effect varies with latitude. To see how this shift to the west of the circulation pattern causes western boundary intensification, consider tracing a path of a bunch of particles as they circulate around the basin. 
Over time, a pattern emerges with all the water particles moving north, bunched up along the western boundary, creating a strong narrow current along that edge. While the same amount of water moving back southward is in a much broader region across the eastern side of the basin. Water flows in the real world are much more complex and dynamic, but this simple model shows how variations in Coriolis parameter with latitude causes western boundary intensification. There are actually a number of factors that contribute to concentrated currents along the western boundary, and interestingly, all of them are influenced by variations of Coriolis effect with latitude. That is the key thing to remember. It isn't just Coriolis effect that causes western boundary intensification. It is the fact that the effect varies with latitude. Because of the fundamental nature of the drivers of this phenomena, an imbalance in currents is found in all of the ocean basins. With warm, concentrated currents flowing away from the equator along the western edges, balanced by slower, less concentrated, cool water currents flowing back towards the equator on the eastern side. Local topography does influence each current. The fact that the coast in the northern hemisphere slope to the east cause these currents to be stronger than the ones in the southern hemisphere where all the coastlines are oriented in the other direction. The western boundary currents transport heat from low latitudes to higher latitudes, and this transport of heat by the water is a major reason the climates in parts of Europe and along the west coast of North America are mild. Because as this warm water moves further north, some of the heat it carries is transferred to the atmosphere. The prevailing winds then move this warmer air eastward onto land, contributing to the moderate climates in these regions. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.